Castaways, the envy of struggling actors everywhere. On a whim, he deferred his sports science degree to chase the dream of acting. Graduating from the prestigious drama school WAPA, before the end of 2012, Nick was starring on our screens as Kyle Braxton on Home and Away. I need to be with him outside this place. What do you want us to do? We can't appeal, you confess. That's not what I'm saying. I need your help. To do what? To break me out of here. Oh, it's high drama. The talented 26-year-old is now a firm favourite on the soapy. He's also making a name for himself outside of Summer Bay as an amateur and very talented musician. But all the focus is on Summer Bay at the moment where Nick's taking part in a prison break on the hit series. And Nick Westaway joins us live in the studio. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. Nick, now this prison break is all part of Steve Peacock's final sort of story on Home and Away. How difficult was it shooting those, those final scenes with him? Um, it was hard to say goodbye to my last remaining brother. <laughs> um, all the stuff in, in the jail was very, very high intensity stuff. And then, uh, as I'm sure you've seen the teasers when the, the car actually kind of mm -hmm. careens off, it's just such an amazing stunt. So it was, um, it was all a bit surreal at the time, but um, you know, to, to look back on it now is, it's just such an epic, you know, finish to such an amazing character. When you saw the script uh, come over the table and you saw Jailbreak, wow, this is going to be fun. <laughs> They're always going to look good on camera. Were you excited? Um, I was really excited, yeah, and um, just going through, uh, you know, the planning of it and, and obviously um, Ash is, is getting involved because he's, you know, quite close to Brax's character. So um, the two of us are really trying to team up and, and work out what the best approach is. Mm. Have you been able to catch up with those on-screen brothers, Steve and Dan? Ewing since they left oh, the show? It's hard. It's yeah. really hard. They're, um, they're just non-stop, those two. But I've seen Dan a couple of times, and um, I think he's about to go on the trail with uh, his new movie, Red Billabong, so he'll be getting busy. And obviously Steve's gone to the States and picked up everything under the sun and you know he, awesome. he was tuning into Logies from London so he's busy as well. Yeah he's a very talented guy and hopefully he'll go all the way. And Nick <laughs> is that something you would like to do? Would you like to head that way the Hollywood end of town? Yeah I think so. I, I, I think I definitely want to give it a shot. I've never been to America I've always wanted to go and um, this industry is uh, always gives you the bug to, to go and see what it's all about so definitely one day. You've got a touch of the Robert Pattinson's about you, I have to say. I've never noticed that before, but in person. In person? Yeah. Yeah, maybe when my hair's a bit longer. Do you get told that? Uh, when I was growing up, yeah, I got You Look Like Cedric Diggory, and then obviously Twilight Who's came Cedric out. Diggory? So that's, that's who Robert Pattinson played in Harry Potter. Oh, and then okay. it changed to You Look Like Edward when Twilight came out. So, <laughs> so if you head over to Hollywood, obviously you've got a lot of you know, idols over there, a lot of role models that have come from home and away. Mm. Why do you, you think Aussies do well over there? Have any of the old school um, come back and talk to you about we it? Just, we just seem to be hard workers. I don't know if it's because the industry is smaller and we, we appreciate the work that we get. I, I don't know what it is, and especially coming off shows like Home and Away, um, you know, me, me being in, I just see how, how hard we work. And obviously there's a clip there of um, Margot Robbie who's mm -hmm. come off Neighbours. You know, they're, they're so fast paced, you get hours and hours in front of a camera, you know, learning the technical stuff that sometimes can get in the way of an actor. So, and it becomes second nature, continuity stuff, hitting your marks, finding your light, coming with ideas, mm -hmm. learning your lines, it's all out of the way. What's it like on the set of Home and Away, Matt? Do you all hang out? Um, yeah, yeah, we do. There's, there's a lot of events that come our way, whether it's through, uh, you know, a charity or something that gets thrown our way. So we enjoy going to that side of things. And, um, you know, sometimes if we've had a tough week, we'll just go down to the pub on the corner and just, you know, have a bit of a debrief and talk about things. And yeah. How do you cope with the fame that's associated with a job, particularly um, on something as iconic as Home and Away? Yeah. I, <sighs> When I joined the show, I got a lot of advice about it. And uh, they said, you're going to go through three cycles. You're going to love it and you're going to feel very important. And then you're going to hate it and wish that you had, you know, a normal life and whatever. And then you'll accept it as part of your job. And that's, that's kind of the stage that I've got to now. And um, it's more about the show and the prestige of such an amazing, iconic Aussie show, yeah. as you say. Good stuff. Yeah. Mate, tell us about your work with World Vision. Obviously, we can um, see yeah, got supporting the brand today. Uh, I went to a youth conference on, uh, on Wednesday morning down at Luna Park and had a thousand kids who are very um, inspired and ready to go so it's something that I, I did back in WA and uh, my dad actually works in schools and gets it running as well um, it's just something that I it's a charity that I really support because um, 
you know, hunger and malnutrition is the world's number one health risk. You know, mm. it's, it's staggering the numbers that come out when you actually look into it. 850 million people all around the world don't have enough to eat to live an active lifestyle. So it's, um, which is what, over 30 times our population, you know, it's, it's, it's staggering. And the, the one that really gets me is that um, kids under five years old, hunger and malnutrition actually causes just under half of the mortality rate for kids under five, which is around about three million per year. So it's, it's just, if you can do something about it, it's mm. amazing. And money goes a long way with this charity. $10 will feed someone for a month. So it is every dollar counts in this scenario. Rob Visioner, a fantastic organisation. Mm. And I can remember the 40 hour famine yes. has been going for so long. So. 40 year anniversary of the 40 hour famine last year. Excellent, mate. Mm. Well, good on you for flying the flag. Good and stuff, good to Nick. see you using your, you know, your fame for good as well. Yeah. See that you're actually really, really interested in the charity and yeah. working for them. Yeah, so thanks, really trying. Good job. Lovely to Thank see you. you. you can Enjoy catch Nick and the rest of the Summer Bay Gang on the next episode of Home and Away this Monday at 7pm right here on 7.